Hello. It's always so awesome to see you. Yeah, you were on my radio show. I was. Well, you know what I said? Christy is just like, she was just so inspired when you said, here I thought what I was doing for the world was going out through BC and it went, it's going through Saskatchewan. It has just, you know, we talked to a guy that runs a hunting guide up Northern Canada and they just got some land up there and they've got a camp and everything. And we were just telling him about this new model. He's coming for the hub factor on Tuesday because he's a Yorkton boy. I've known him since he was 18. He's 45. Oh, wow. So he's telling Christy about what kind of influence I've been on him just with knowing me. And it's, it makes me proud, Elijah, because I'm going through a little bit of, you know, they're changing the locks next door. I go to go to the door in between LR, the, the hub and my old office and they've changed the locks. And I'm like, like I'm staying down. I stayed last night. I stayed in that bedroom that yep. you stayed in. Yep. But I almost felt like I was invading their space. But once he, uh, once Emmanuel moves out, we're going to make it so that that place can lock and we still have access to that suite from downstairs. Okay. It's gonna be a time you're going to be spending a couple months with us, and we need a place for you, right? Yes. <laughs> So it'll be fun. Anyway, the radio show went fabulous. And it was all Kaylee and I, and we talked about mentorship and mentees, mentors and mentees. Ah. And I said, this kid is catching on to this business model. She goes, I shouldn't be saying this online. I'm learning more from Lori and through this process about business than I'm learning in business school. For sure. Yeah. So isn't that, isn't that awesome? Is it, you're anyway, dealing I'm excited with, to be here. You're dealing with reality. Okay. We, we had a, have you talked to Sylvia since her? No, I because I, I was gone to a radio show. She was still in on hers. Okay. Yeah. We, we did something that I'll do with you because I think it's something very important. Oh, perfect. Um, that you're going to really like. Uh, so you've got, I mean, you, you obviously know the nine personality profile types. I do so. Okay. Now, how much do you understand about the time translator? Do you have memorized on an Enneagram the different time cycles? No, I don't. Okay, so right now, draw an Enneagram. Okay, yeah. Okay, the whole and thing, like this, this triangle and the whole works? The whole schmeal deal. Okay. And so okay. what we're doing, if you look at the map behind me, is the base foundation of the inflow matrix is the time translator. There you go. I guess I got mastered. <laughs> so awesome. you, see, you see the two maps behind me? Yeah. You recognize them? Yeah. So on the right, you've got the Enneagram. And yeah. if you look at the words that you have the different time cycles on it. Yeah. Have you ever seen, do you, do you, like, I'm not sure how much you understand this particular map. Have I ever gone through the Enneagram with the time cycles on it? Nope. Okay. This is, this, this is probably the most important thing that you've never had. Oh my gosh. So at one, right, lifetime cycle. Yep. At two, right, yearly cycle. Okay, two is yearly, yeah. At three, right, lunar cycle. Mm -hmm. At four, right, daily cycle. Mm -hmm. At five, right, seasonal cycle. Okay. At six, hourly cycle. At hourly. Se mm -hmm. seven, minute cycle. At eight, present moment, and nine, timelessness. Okay. Cool. So basically, what we, in the center? what's that? Anything in the center? All cycles. All cycles. Okay. Okay. So now if you look at the maps behind me, the time translator, the uh, purple is lifetime, the blue is yearly, the aquamarine is lunar, and the green is daily. So that, that matches over here to lifetime, yearly, lunar, and daily, right? Then the, the colors within the Enneagram, oh my gosh. <laughs> so, so then at yellow, you've got seasonal now. At, that's at five. So at five, you, you have four to the left, you have four to the right. Yep. So five is where the human stands. Five is, is the place where if you look on the time translator, you have all the Mayan signs each one of those is actually a, is a person each one of these is a 20 person team oh. so that's where the person stands 
and then on the other side of the uh, seasonal, you have hourly at six, yep. minute at seven, mm -hmm. eight is present moment, and yep. nine is timelessness, which on this is, you see the pink is an hour, minutes, present moment, and timelessness, right? Wow. So everything layers. This, in a sense, could be the fundamental choice wheel where the at lifetime you have field research and science mm -hmm. right that's the flow wheel the synergy wheel and the harmony wheel yeah at, at two you have resources infrastructure and economics yeah and that's at the yearly cycle and then at the lunar cycle you have job learning, learning. and education, education. yep yeah. And then at the daily cycle, you have activities, operations, and technology. Yep. -er. And then at the five, you have products or gifts at the seasonal cycle, and then creativity and arts. And then at the six, at the hourly cycle, you have relationships, synergy, and health. And then at seven, you have at the minute cycle, paths, services philanthropy oh just one sec okay i'm just i i i do mo know most of these and i do have them on a map just in the hub but i'm on minute on number seven okay okay seven is paths yeah services and philanthropy philanthropy right and then at eight you have strategies at the present moment strategies marketing or interfacing and yeah. politics yeah and then at nine you have timelessness where you have agreements, stewardship, and governance. Right. Okay. So what I want to do is kind of, the, for you, you, you have the Enneagram personality types memorized and you know them well. Yeah. So I want to go through one. I want to start at one and go through that and have you relate the personality profile with the timing cycle with the flow wheel word. I have to grab another colored pen because I want to link it. One second. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so do you have your nine personality? I mean, you probably already got them right in your head. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now tell me, what's the personality profile at number one? Perfectionist or reformer. Okay, now look at that in relationship to lifetime Mm -hmm. and fee and field potential how do you think they're related well very much about structure and organizing researchers like anybody i know in that one personality they're amazing researchers mm. so they're very you know like the one that i had that i worked with for years she was a compliance officer uh. that was her role in my company was a compliance officer slash you know admin to my investments she was a perfect person to play that role. Uh, yeah. Okay. Or I so, go in stress. <laughs> okay, number two. What's yeah. the what's the uh, so number type? two is the helper. Okay, so then you're looking at yearly and resources. How do those three connect together? So I guess the helper in the personality and not quite seeing how that's working in with the yearly and the resource like the resource being money and stuff like that to take things forward um they become a big resource themselves a helper when they're really healthy in their personality of two. Oh. Yeah. yeah well I mean, they're they're, amazing okay i mean if you're looking at a helper and basically let's say you go to the helper and the yeah. helper for the whole has a big warehouse and has a big list of all the events going to happen and all the resources necessary. So you go to the helper and the helper goes, okay, what do you need? Goes to the warehouse, whatever you need, brings it to you. Okay, well, that was Wendy this morning with Christy because Wendy's given us a rundown on what the cost is to run this space so that we can start creating a budget for ourselves. Uh -huh. And he said, it's like when she asked Wendy those questions, Wendy lit up and she's a helper. Okay. Yeah, so that, that makes sense. Okay, so now let's go down to three. Mm -hmm. The Achiever. The achiever and it's the time cycle is what? Is lunar. And the flow wheel word is what? 
is the flow is job learning and education. Okay, but just the ju just the flow oh, wheel for now. So job, job. job. Yep. Okay, so now connect those three together. Mm -hmm. And what do you get? Well, I get design your ideal job right off the bat, but teaching it in such a different way than a normal education system. So what I see here, knowing a type three near and dear to me is my friend, Carrie Harris, who's our business partner here. She's a principal in a school and she's sick of being in that system. So, and she's an achiever in her personality. Uh -huh. And she fits, fits into the coaching and the teaching on the um, shared, knowledge, uh, shared knowledge community as well. Very nice. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. Number four. A daily psyche, cycle. So activities, operations with technology. The type four is the individualist. So Elijah, my friend, he's an individualist. He's very creative, very behind the scenes kind of guy, but just has magic happening because they're, they're the ones that can be behind the scenes, writing music, writing poetry, designing the inflow matrix to take out to the world. Um, the individualists that I know, I've got a few of them in my life, and I have heard from my teacher for the Enneagram that how many of you sevens, how many of you fours have a seven in your life? Because the seven is almost like the one that can take out the voice of the four because the fours are more behind the scenes. Uh -huh. So I have a lot of fours in my life. My niece, who is awesome, the guy I'm writing a book with, Guy Schultz, you'll meet him, and you. You guys are all type four. So fitting that into activities, operations with technology makes total sense because a lot of it is behind the scenes, making things run smooth so that the present moment or the minute can be getting it out there, getting it out there, getting it out there. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So five, who's at five? Five is the investigator. Okay. And what's, my, what's the time cycle? And the time cycle is products. No, that's the flow wheel. Time oh, cycle. seasonal, seasonal. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Okay, With, so how do those three relate? Okay, so products, creativity, and arts. So to me, what I see here is an in investigator. They're going, okay, there's a product, because I have a lot of five in me, because I go there in um, growth. What I see is that I had a, I had a product or a service investments in the world of investments or blue cross health insurance. And I was always constantly going, how can we be creative to take this out in a whole different way? Because there's 10 other people that sell blue cross, but how can we be unique selling blue cross and selling an experience to people so that we can be the top agent in the province. And we became that for individual sales. Oh. Yeah. So the, that's the investigator. They're very much in their head, but they're always just going, Oh, I see how this could all work. Uh, mm -hmm. So my oldest son is a five. So I've got really near and dear people to me in each of these categories. It's nice to have. and it's, Isn't it? Because you need the real life example, right? To see how it exactly. works. Exactly. Okay. And, and so it's six. Is uh, the loyalist and it's okay. hourly. Okay. And what's the flow word? Uh, relationships. There you go. Energy and health. Okay, so how do they all relate? So it is li literally stepping into your health as the outer, as the outer, but synergy is keeping it all flowing. So the relationships, and especially with self, is one of the most important to keep yourself healthy so that you can be the Ill illuminator or the person that builds relationships as a loyalist with others. So young Kaylee is a loyalist. Ah. She's a loyalist. We went and did a radio show on mentorship. And she was unbelievable. The guy that owns a radio station goes, oh, you two are like, just don't have enough energy for this show. He goes, you guys were magical. So I see in relationships, because when my dad died, Kaylee's grandfather was Métis on her mom's side. And she gave me the biggest hug. And it was like, I had a little guardian angel saying her grandpa told her that she needed to help take care of me because this was a big time in my life for grieving. Mm. And this kid gave me the biggest hug. She's not related to me. She's not any, you know, and she gave me so relationships is key for her. So when I hear maybe a three, the achiever go, well, you know, she's just using you. I just go, are you kidding me? She's one of the biggest loyalists I could ever find. Mm. She will be a big promoter for me. Mm. Yeah. So health, staying healthy, 
in relationships, in synergy, saying that you've got to keep everything rolling synergistic and flowing beautiful so that we stay healthy in a natural way without science and the drugs. That's how I see that. Okay. Like I remember Lorianne, she played a lot of that role because she had that health equation, remember? Right, for sure. And it, yeah, so seven is seven. the enthusiast. Seven? Yep. Uh, is the enthusiast. And it's the minute cycle. And it's path, service, and philanthropy. So I'm a type seven. So I can say as an enthusiast, I do live my life minute by minute in the moment because an idea can pop in or I can see something and I can already see how it could evolve. But I also see paths and service and the paths we need to take with the services that we're providing create philanthropy. So Christy came into my life. She's also a type eight. So Christy came into my life. And when she came to do some financial work with me, we were talking about what, you, which, what investment she was. I'm not as concerned about the high interest rate or my high rate of return as I am on the difference the fund I'm investing in is making in the world. Mm. I go, I need this girl to come and join us at the hub. She came that afternoon and she never left. Wow. So that's very much because philanthropy is big for me. And I've already been to a part through my life where I've made my living with my company. And now I can step more into a philanthropic role, which is really exciting for me. Mm. It's an adventure. Mm. So, so the seven. Now the eight is the challenger. They sometimes call them the boss. Um, and it's the, it's the present moment. So I see the minute and the present moment being very connected for me. Because mm. um, I'm a seven, but I have an eight wing. Mm. So I go from my head to my gut. Mm. And I know I've been intuitive in my gut, but my head's taken over and not listened. That's how I got ripped off $50,000. Mm. So it's strategies. So what are the strategies? The marketing, what do we need to illuminate out there? to take out there, not your standard marketing, but your illumination mm -hmm. and politics. I'm not positive because when I think of politics, Elijah, I just think of the politicians. Well, it's, politics is the external relationship of the system with everything around it, in a sense. Oh, okay. your politics is basically, <clears throat> again, your business's interaction with your environment. Oh, the marketing is, is, is working there to bring your customers in and to, to bring your services out. And mm -hmm. so that's, you're always in the present moment interacting with everything around you. Right. So it's like your signs, it's like your messages, it's your strategies, it's everything. Oh, you're doing. The you message that through. we're portraying. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. So external relationships with the system. So it's not politics really meaning, you know, the government. The parties no because they're you know that's kind of like the largest extreme of politics in terms of i don't even want to talk to them because i mean there's a big difference in governance and yeah. politics yeah. yeah so governance is how you're running your system politics is how that system is interacting with all the other systems oh, and interacting with all other systems oh my goodness this is fabulous Oh, I'm doing what I love. I'm learning the personalities around the wheel. I mean, I'm, oh, this is me. Amazing. Okay. Come and say hi quick. Yeah. She did an amazing job on the radio. This young lady. Hey, Kaylee. You? I'm doing good. She's just a little gem. This one, she's going to be our, she's going to be running the youth. Like, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. <clears throat> Are we going to have a session soon? Kaylee, is that? One of you guys both. We can just deduct it off. So you guys can plan that. Do you want to throw in the tech uh, sure. a message? Because I think it would be very good. And if you do, you have time today for her. Um, oh, she sure doesn't have time. She's Friday. going to just class. <clears throat> maybe Friday. <clears throat> okay. So just send him a message. Yeah, I'll send you a message. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So that's cool. Then see. So I've always kind of thought out to the world. I called it politics, but now I see where the verbiage for me has to change a bit because I, can, I can't stand politics. Yeah. Because me, it's not run proper in the way that I know politics. And when, when I went to Habitat for Humanity, we got money from the Saskatchewan government when I was the chair. We went into the political, whatever it's called in Regina. 
And I'm sitting there, kind of being all peaceful, talking to the lady beside me. And all of a sudden, I'm hearing like a bunch of kids fighting in a sandbox, one side to the other. And all we were doing was see who could raise their voice higher and see who could yell. And I go, are you freaking kidding me? This is something that's out there to make the world a better place. <laughs> so I, that was my first hand experience of anything like that. And I was shocked because I don't pay attention to it. Mm. It, make, it gives me, so when I see the word politics, now I've got a better understanding. It's the external relationship with the system and inter interacting with all the other systems yeah. within, within this whole circle. Yeah. Oh, well, well, actually, not not necessarily. Like the whole circle is basically your system. Yeah. But the eight is the relationship of that system with everything else, right? Like at seven, you're giving your services to the environment. So oh, yeah. customers are coming in at seven, but eight is how you bring the customers in. Oh. Okay. Okay. I mean, marketing really, when you think about it, that is how do you get the customers in? You get it like the radio show I just did. Yeah. You know, okay. How do you bring the customers in? Yeah. Okay. But I do like the word illuminating. I use both words so people can relate illuminating with, because of course we're new paradigm, right? We're taking this to a whole new level. So um, how you bring the customers in. Okay. Perfect. So number no. nine <clears throat> is the peacemaker or the mediator. But I say the peacemaker, the Riso Hudson, it's the peacemaker. So it's agreements. Okay. It's stewardship taking charge. So whether that peacemaker, that nine point is about being the steward of your own life or steward of an organization or steward of the community or whatever it be, it goes into agreements, stewardship, and then governance. Yeah. So to me, governance is how it's run. Yeah. Right. Okay. So how and, it's and so how would the, how would the peacemaker relate to timelessness and agreements? Well, because it's always there's no time. There's no time to it because it's happening always. There's no. It's almost like there's no time. Mm -hmm. It's a constant, evolving, ever evolving um, thing. Like whatever's going on in that area, it's just ever evolving. So that's why it's called timelessness, I think. Yeah. Is that kind of right? Yeah. I mean, it's like if you look at the primary triad, you've got your three, which is your lunar schedule, focused yeah. on your job. You've yeah. got, and that's, you're looking at your 28 day cycle and you're looking at how to plan four weeks in a cycle. Yeah. And then over at six, you have the hour and that's where you're focusing on your, like right now we're in a one hour session. Yeah. And so that's, you are then going to have a meeting with whoever, and then you're going to have a meeting with like all of your hours are represented by who you're spending time with. Oh, okay. So your takeaway today mm -hmm. is I'm going to send you some maps for the, for the four sevens. But okay. I want you to use your five communication space map. Yeah. And I want you to map out your ideal job in those four weeks. And so what, what are, how much money do you want to make? Yeah. How much money okay. do you want to make per month? Okay. Okay. Lori, how much money do you want to make per month? <clears throat> oh, I'm thinking probably, you know, Three grand for now. Okay. How many hours do you want to work per week? I want to work exactly, I'll tell you right now, seven, 14, 18 hours. 18 hours a week? Yep. Well, no, it's going to be more. I'm just thinking being in the hub because I do a lot of research. <clears throat> so let's say three hours a week. 30 hours a week. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so then part of that is going to be pay time and part of that is going to be unpaid time. So when you structure your, your like your one on one time, your group time, your community time, yeah. your personal time, then you got to structure which one of those you're going to be paid and which ones you're not going to be paid. Oh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> so if you have, let's say, five one on one discovery process, one on one sessions cost X amount. Yeah. Um, and you're going to do them, let's say, Thursday afternoon from one to four kind of thing, right? Yeah. Okay. So what we're doing is we're creating the ideal schedule first. Okay. And that's what you're going to aim as, as to, to create for your ideal job. Oh, okay. 
Okay. Basically, you designing your time is the biggest thing, right? Yeah, yeah. And so you decide on how much money you want to make. Okay. Awesome. So five spaces map, how much do I want to make? How many hours a week do I want to work? Paid and unpaid. And where does it happen on this map? And I decide on my time and where it's going to be. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Like tonight I'm doing a workshop on kind of money 101 with Habitat for Humanity Families, but it's my philanthropy. Right. I'm just giving that back. But you know what I see is I'm going to create such a beautiful program because it's not just about money that pe people are going to tell each other and I'm going to get more people because my biggest desire is to take Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Yeah. And to say we need to get people off that base level, moved up a level to make humanity thrive. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, tell me more then about your ideal job. Like how else do you want to structure things? Just kind well, of go with the flow and let me give it to you. You know what my ideal job is, is really getting on, like doing online training. So I want to do that. So let's say Dare to Be Used coming up. I really am going to thrive that, but I'm, I've got a nervousness to get it started. And I think once we flow with it, but then to take it from where I have to be here in person, Elijah, to creating programs that people can do it on their time. But actually with the program, it has an accountability factor. So as a coach, we're doing check-ins with them. Okay. So kind of to keep, like when I was with Dale Carnegie and I was one of the students, I never missed a class. And then when they, I said, oh my God, this Dale Carnegie work is amazing. Let's take it to Yorkton. So I went to our local college and I said, I knew a lady there. And I said, is there any way we can bring Dale Carnegie to Yorkton? We had people from our potash mine. We had city of Yorkton people. We had farm dealership people. And I became like almost a coach. So when you take Dale Carnegie, you're welcome to go in and be a coach within it. So I was the one that always got to go up to the front of the class to show them what the next class was going to be about. So I love stuff like that because I've always thought, you know, you go to a motivational speaker and I'm motivated. So I come back and I do something, but how many times do you go to a motivational speaker and then walk away and go, now what? There's no follow-up. There's no nothing. So I want to be that person that gets a course going online, but I don't have to be there every minute, every hour with you, but we do check-ins just to get people to move that step up so that they're, they're kept accountable. Okay. That is an exciting arena for me to be in. And the other arena is like this hub factor and bringing people into the space and really taking them through an experience, but having a cost to it. Okay. So, so I see that, I see me doing <laughs> some one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I prefer if I can do groups and then the groups break into one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. Yeah. I, I haven't heard you mention the discovery process. So how does that fit in? Well, I guess the discovery process would be part of the coaching. But now we get the, the discovery process refined, Elijah, so that I am pulling it into a seven-part series. Like it's got nine points to it. But I liked what you said yesterday about putting it into seven things where you get people high and excited and then they come back into part two and then they get excited so what each of those parts are going to look like as far as my program goes that i'm as i say coaching that's what i'm thinking because yeah it is to do with money and finances but again it's to do with beliefs it's to do with risk management it's to do with a lot of how in the flow are you with your money and right. how can i help you um live live the uh life of your dreams and for you, it might seem too big right now, but what are the steps we can take? So actually to get people to step into action. And I've been a little bit, this is not the right thing to say, but I've been a little bit lazy with it, Elijah, because I was a financial advisor. I'm making money. I was making money anyway from the companies. So I wasn't putting it serious enough for the value that I was giving people and the cost to make them accountable. Right. So I've got, I probably have 30, 40 discovery process files in this room that I can probably go back on now and start talking to the people, getting them back in and say, okay, this is where we were two years ago. We need to update and this is what it's going to look like. So I've got to get the price structure and everything. Okay. Yeah. 
So people kind of stepping into power with their money. Okay. Well, why don't we work on the price structure a little bit? Yeah, I, I would love to do that. So you're, you want to do the seven step program. Yeah. Um, but you've got nine pieces of the pie. Yeah. Um, you have the discovery process. Did I send you the map? You did. Um, okay. Do you, if I do you have it on your computer? Could could we put it on the screen? I don't have it on my computer, but I'll run and grab it. Just a sec. I can show it to you. 